Felix Mendelssohn. Felix Mendelssohn was born on February 3rd, 1809, in Hamburg, Germany. He was born to parents who were born Jewish, but converted to Christianity before he and his siblings were born. Because of this, Mendelssohn grew up with a mixed identity, sharing both Christian and Jewish values. This reflects in his later musical compositions. Mendelssohn began to study the piano at a very young age after he moved with his family to Berlin. At the age of 10, he joined the Sing Academy Music Academy and began to compose nonstop. Mendelssohn was quick to establish himself as a child prodigy. He made his first public debut at age 9 after having composed a handful of operas and 11 symphonies. By his 15th birthday, his old teacher had declared him a member of the Brotherhood of Bach, Haydn, and Mozart. In 1826, at the age of 17, he composed one of his most well-known works, Overture to a Midsummer Night's Dream. A year later, he presented The Marriage of Camacho, the only one of his operas presented in public during his lifetime. During his time at Sing Academy, he also became a conductor. In 1829, he conducted a performance of Bach's St. Matthew Passion. The success of this performance allowed Mendelssohn some other unique opportunities, including a chance to conduct the London Philharmonic Society. This was a key event in the revival of interest in Bach's work. Inspired by his visit to England and Scotland, Mendelssohn began work on his Symphony No. 3, otherwise known as the Scottish Symphony. He continued to work prolifically while working as a conductor, completing Reformation Symphony in 1830, Songs Without Words in 1832, and Italian Symphony in 1833. In 1835, Mendelssohn was granted an illustrious role. He was made the conductor of the Gewandhaus Orchestra in Leipzig. Mendelssohn met Cécile Jean Renaud in 1836 in Frankfurt. They, they married in 1837 and had five children over the course of their marriage. However, Mendelssohn is rumored to have carried out, carried out an affair with a woman named Jenny Lind. If, the, if true, this lends new meaning to some of Mendelssohn's music because it gives us an inside perspective into his mind and where he was and his personal life when he was writing these pieces. There are rumors that you and Felix Mendelssohn had an affair. What can you tell us about that? We were very close. I never met anyone like him, and living in a world without him was almost too much to bear. <laughs> he wanted us to elope in America together, and he threatened to kill himself if I didn't do it. I don't think I will ever feel the same for anyone as I felt for Felix Mendelssohn. Unfortunately, Jenny Lind died without ever showing anyone the love letters from Mendelssohn, and they were burned after her death. Because of this, many of the steamy details of her relationship with Mendelssohn were lost to time. We never know for sure Mendelssohn's true feelings for his forbidden lover, but we, we can make some steamy guesses. To honor his memory, Jenny Lind created the Mendelssohn Scholarship Foundation. The same year he married, he composed Piano Concerto No. 2 in D minor. From 1838 to 1844, he worked on Violin Concerto in E minor. Before he finished this piece, he founded the Leipzig Conservatory of Music, which put Leipzig on the map as the musical center of Germany. In 1836, he presented his new, newly written Elijah at the Birmingham Festival. He also performed for Queen Victoria and Prince Albert at Buckingham Palace during this time. This is a this is a a tribute to how popular he was all across Europe at this time, including members of both the upper and the lower classes. Everybody could enjoy his dazzling style. In 1847, Mendelssohn's beloved sister died. Her death left him so devastated that his own health began to decline.
You and your brother are very close. Tell us about your relationship. Felix and I have always been the musical ones in the family, but our father never liked the fact that I was composing music and he didn't want me to publish it at all. Felix offered to publish some of my own music under his own name. I'm really grateful for him, to him for that. When he met Queen Victoria, she told him about her favorite piece of his and he was so embarrassed because it was actually one of mine. Queen Victoria liked my music better than his. Is that not hysterical? <laughs> he would also ask for my criticism of his latest work, which I would readily give him. He always seriously took into consideration whatever I had to say about them. This was compounded by his already strenuous career. He died on November 4th, 1847, of a ruptured blood vessel in Leipzig, Germany. Even though he was only 38 when he died, Mendelssohn established himself as one of the first significant composers of the 1800s. He has been christened the Mozart of the 19th century. Musical Style Mendelssohn had been compared to Mozart from a young age. Mendelssohn was often compared to Mozart because they were both considered child prodigies during their respective times. Mozart was very adept at reciting music, whereas Mendelssohn was already producing original and new compositions at this same young age. While both musicians were certainly geniuses, they were clearly geniuses in very different ways. But while Mozart was mimicking music of his time at the age of 16, Mendelssohn was composing original and creative new textures and ideas at this age. M Mendelssohn has been described as both a progressive romantic and as the true heir to the great Baroque and classical traditions. His style was clearly influenced by Beethoven, but it is also a composite of many different strains of music during this time. For this reason, some critics point to the fact that his, com the composite style of his music makes it so that he is an immature uh, composer. But even though it has been described as a composite of many other styles, Mendelssohn shows a mastery of composition and he obviously manages to craft a unique style that is identifiable as his own. The music that has been playing in the background is an excerpt from one of Mendelssohn's most famous works that was composed as a concert overture. It is called A Midsummer Night's Dream. Despite its name, it was not composed to be an exact accompaniment to Shakespeare's play of the same title. However, it was inspired by the play and incorporates some plot elements, most significantly, significantly in its innovative instrumental effects. This piece is representative of Mendelssohn's style as it, is a, as it is romantic and atmospheric, but incorporates many classical elements such as sonata form and harmonic transitions. It also includes some striking instrumental effects such as the portrayal of a donkey braying and the scampering of feet. These effects were rather innovative at the time and marked one of the first times instruments have, had been used in this manner, at least formally. Thank you for watching here this morning on uh, www.music.com. Here we have our credits, narrated by me, Bobby Boyles, written by Joseph Cato and Whitney Schroeder. Uh, Joseph Cato contributed the art found in this movie. Uh, we have the handsome Joseph Cato and the lovely Whitney Schroeder doing our acting in our skit, and it was directed by the Bobby Bones. And here are our sources where we got our information. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.